Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and X. Hi everyone. In, uh, in this uh, clip, I'm going to talk about the one of the most important, common and complex and complicated and challenging issue, aortic stenosis grading, especially those measurement and uh, evaluating and low flow, low gradient, severe aortic stenosis. Before that, I want to mention in this uh, case, uh, another important uh, issue uh, that is differentiation between the pleural effusion and pericardial effusion here we have a patient 82 years old with the history of the coronary artery disease moderate aortic stenosis obstructive sleep apnea that comes to the emergency with the episodes of the head lightness uh, some uh, few times fainting and recently increasing shortness of the breath we have uh, all information that later for grading we use it here on the plaques far field and near field and apical four chamber we have some on echo area based on those classic uh, rules is this patient has pericardial effusion or prolar effusion and you can uh, guess uh, that is is opposite of the against the that general rules uh, uh, that you have to uh, logically discuss and how you can differentiate this is pleural effusion and pericardial effusion now let's see what the patient has for this on echo area and what those are structure here we go and measure uh, the first measurement for the aortic stenosis graded as we have here apical uh, plaques parasol lung access and we measure uh, 2.5 uh, centimeter based on this image uh, and clip is that this measurement correct or not uh, what is the rule that we explained before in the other lecture second on previous study the patient LVOT measure 2.3 with ejection fraction 55 percent almost normal and aortic valve area 1.3 centimeter square which one we use it 2.5 2.3 what is the general rules uh, does any situation can change the size of the lvot uh, here this patient ejection fraction measure around 38 uh, percent 38 ter uh, take it as a 35 to 40 percent so uh, what is the rules and which one we use it how we make decision we go measure uh, those other parameter including ejection fraction around 39 between 35 to 40 percent then we do doppler on the aorta we have uh, many cases we have bit to bit of variants like these cases especially when we have low ejection fraction what is the rule do we go measure average of them all of them at least three five or not even here rhythm is a sinus regular which what is the rule we measure highest one shortest one uh, lowest one or average all of them the same way for the uh, continuous Doppler pedoff. Which one we use if we have such thing like that? We go average or high, highest one. What about if we have PVC? Do we measure after PVC when we have LV function, LV dysfunction or not? What about LVOT? Here, as you can see, again, we have variants between LVOT, shortest, smallest one, average, and highest one. Which one we go? Now, we go and take as a, this measurement. We finally, for any reason that you have to give us, uh, this uh, finding come to the end. Vmax uh, below four meters, mean pressure gradient below 40 millimercury 
but aortic valve area below 1 cm square and dimensionless index is below 0.25. So we have two uh, criteria for severe aortic stenosis and two criteria that doesn't match up. We have discrepancy between this uh, finding. What we have to do and uh, what is uh, the diagnosis, correct diagnosis, what we have to calculate here and what is the next step. Uh, and then I want to apologize for the some delay because I was between the relocation and settled down in new place. It was a little gap, too much gap between the uh, lectures. From now on, I try to get at least once a week one uh, practical lecture and all those other topics that uh, we have I haven't talked about that I try to give at least one clips and I am as always I am waiting for all of your uh, feedback doesn't matter positive or negative up to the next time have a wonderful time